host at Princeton University, and he will be talking about heat verification. Thank you. All right, so I'm Gordon Stewart, as Stephanie said. Uh, the title of this talk is Veristar Verified Heat Care Improver by Paramodulation. And this is joint work with Leonard Ferringer and my advisor, Andrew O'Fell. And so Veri uh, Veristar is a theorem improver for a decidable subset of separation logic. Um, and one of the unique aspects of Veristar is that it's implemented entirely in the cock of the system. Uh, so we've done a proof of soundness of the system, machine checked in cock. And we've also gone to great pains to, bake, to make both the theorem prover and the soundness proof modular. Uh, so the theorem prover is plug compatible with Smallfoot, with his, which is a static analysis based on uh, separation logic. And uh, the, the um, uh, soundness proof is retargetable to new separation logics by an opaque interface. Um, Veristar is also, also purely functional. It's implemented in Zolina, the pure functional language embedded inside the Cock theorem prover. And it's reasonably efficient. Uh, it implements a state-of-the-art algorithm for deciding heat entailments. And this is the algorithm described by uh, Navarro Perez and Rubulchenko in uh, their PLDI 2011 paper. And uh, we've done some performance tuning of the implementation uh, by extraction of the COP code to a camel and then profiling with the standard profiling tool, uh, GPROF. And so Veristar also forms the core of a static analysis which we built for C minor. Uh, which is a C-like language used in the Comcert certified C compiler. Uh, the static analysis is called uh, Verismal, um, and um, it calls upon Veristar, which I'm going to talk about today, to decide heap entailments during symbolic execution. And Verismal is also um, implemented in Cock. And both of these tools are proof sound with respect to um, a separation logic we designed for C minor. Uh, which itself has a proof of soundness checked in cock with respect to the operational semantics of concerts in minor. Uh, so what we get is end-to-end -end guarantee that when the shape analysis claims the shape, some shape property holds of our program, um, we get a guarantee that that property will hold as a compiled assembly. All right, so now I want to give you an overview of how the theorem prover works. So Veristar as input takes entailments and separation logic. And I'll describe in a moment what our assertion language looks like. Um, step one um, is clausification. So we're going to represent the negation of entailments, uh, of the input entailment, as a set of clauses. And clauses here are just disjunctions of literals. And then the goal of the theorem prover is to show that this initial set of clauses, which encodes the negation of the entailment, um, is inconsistent or implies false. Right, so step two, what we're going to do is pull out the pure clauses in our set of clauses. And pure clauses here are ones that don't reference the heap or the memory. And we're going to call a procedure called paramodulation on this subset of our pure subset of our clauses. And paramodulation is just an extension of uh, resolution for reasoning about the qualities. So paramodulation uh, may, either, may either find a contradiction um, in the pure subset of our clause database, in which case we've proved that the entailment is valid, um, or we may not be able to find a contradiction, in which case we're going to rely on the completeness proof of the paramodulation system. Um, which tells us that if we can't find a contradiction, we're going to be able to build a model of a set of pure clauses. So what we're going to do in step three is use that model to help guide the normalization of the spatial clauses in our clause set. And then we're going to attempt to derive some new pure facts from the spatial ones uh, via spatial inferences. We're going to add these pure clauses back to our clause set. And we're going to repeat this loop until we either derive uh, false and prove that the entailment is valid, um, or we reach a fixed point on the set of pure clauses, um, in which case we've shown that the entailment is invalid. And uh, this, this algorithm is reputation complete, so for any initial inconsistent set of clauses, um, we'll be able to derive false. Right, so let's look at a more concrete example. Now, this is an entailment um, handled by our system. It consists of some pure constraints on program variables, form E1 equals E2 and E1 is not equal E2. <laughs> and these can be conjoined with spatial assertions, uh, such as maps to's. Um, so A maps to B is an assertion in separation logic, which says we have some heap uh, which at location A contains the value B and is empty everywhere else. And these assertions can be starred together using the star operator of separation logic uh, with other spatial assertions, uh, such as list segment assertions. So B squiggly arrow of C is our syntax for a list segment um, from B to C. And these are list segments that aren't necessarily null-terminated lists, uh, but they are required to be acyclic. Um, and 
they may be empty. So for example, the list segment um, from B to D is the empty heap uh, whenever the head pointer B equals the tail pointer D. Right, so let's look at what our algorithm does on this particular attempt. So the first step is clausification. We're going to code uh, the negation of the entailment as a set of clauses. And we end up with clauses one through four. I mean, uh, this classification step is verified by our prover, but you just have to trust me uh, that these clauses actually represent, encode the negation of the entailment. So what we're going to do in step two is pull out the pure clauses from our clause set. And here, the pure clauses are A, uh, one, A does not equal C, and two, B equals D. What we're going to do is call paramodulation on this subset of our clause database. But here, paramodulation is not going to be able to derive uh, any new clauses, um, and it's not going to be able to derive false either. Um, so what we're going to do is rely on the completeness proof of the paramodulation system to build a model of clauses one and two. And here the model is pretty straightforward. We just set B equal to D and A not equal to C. And now what we're going to do is use this model uh, to help normalize, to help guide the normalization of clauses three and four. Basically just by rewriting B by D everywhere it appears in clauses three and four. So B doesn't appear in clause four, so we just end up with the new clause three, A match to D, star list seg D, C, star list seg D, D. Uh, but now we recognize that the list seg from D to D uh, must be empty because D equals D. So we can further normalize this clause to A match to D, star list seg D, C. But now we're in a good position uh, because we recognize that the spatial assertion in clause three almost matches the spatial assertion in clause four, uh, list seg A to C, uh, which is in a negative position. And in fact, we can make the spatial assertion in clause four match the one in clause three uh, if we're able to unfold the list segment in clause four to expose a single console or a mass to fact. And we know we can do this unfolding whenever the list segment is non-empty. So what we're going to do is add a new clause to our set of clauses, which encodes this line of reasoning, clause five. And this just says that either we were able to unfold the list segment in clause four to expose a mass to, or the list segment was empty, in which case A equals C. But now the spatial assertion in clause three, uh, which is in a positive position, positive position uh, directly matches the spatial assertion in clause five in a negative position. Uh, we're gonna, so we're gonna, gonna be able to apply a rule called spatial resolution uh, to cancel these two assertions out. And we end up with clause six, A equals C. But this directly contradicts clause one, A does not equal C. Uh, so we uh, found a contradiction and it's proved that the original entailment uh, is valid. All right, so now I want to talk about um, our soundness proof of Veristar. At the bottom of this slide, I've um, listed the code for the main procedures of the system, but I want you to focus on just the statement of the soundness theorem. Right, so the soundness theorem is called check entailment sound, and what this says is that for any entailment, ENT, which is deeply embedded in our syntactic assertion language. Um, if the function check entailment, uh, which is listed on the right of the slide, uh, says that that entailment is valid, then the interpretation of that entailment holds in some appropriate separation logic. The question here is in what, in what separation logic do we want to interpret entailments? Uh, we'd like to say something about entailments in our separation logic for C minor. Uh, but we'd also like our theorem prover and its soundness proof to be more general than just C minor. Right, so what we did was um, to prove the soundness of our system with respect to a module type, uh, which we call the separation logic interface, uh, which axiomatizes the types, um, the operators, and the predicates on those types um, that we require in the soundness proof. So for example, it axiomatizes the types of locations and values. And it also requires something called a separation algebra on values, which just gives us a nice way to reason about values as resources. We also require something uh, called val to lock, which is an injection from values to locations, uh, which may fail because not all values are locations. We require two special values, nil val, which is the null pointer, and empty val, which means undefined or not the domain of a particular heap. And we have a standard axiomatization of environments as some type of getters and setters and axioms about those operations. And then a heap is just um, some type of a separation algebra. Um, and then we require a couple uh, primitive predicates on heaps. So the raw next predicate, uh, for example, is a primitive version of a master predicate. 
So it just says that location x maps to value y in heap h. And the predicate m at says that heap h is empty at location l. Some of the other parameters here are related, but there are more details in the paper. And so then what we did is uh, to build a, we built a standard model of separation logic as a functor over modules of the type that I just showed you. So I'll just describe a couple of definitions from our model. So states are just pairs of environments and heaps. The function space atom denote uh, gives the interpretation of the spatial atoms in our um, assertion language. So next xy is the syntax for maps twos. And we just interpret maps twos using raw next uh, in the standard way. And list segments are also interpreted in the standard way. Uh, just with an inductive definition, because list segments are either empty, in which case the head and the tail pointers are equal, or a list segment has at least one console. And so we've instantiated this model uh, to our separation logic for C minor. In C minor, locations are just C minor addresses. Uh, values are option C minor val, where none is the empty val. Uh, val to lock uh, is our injection from values to locations. So here we just check whether a value is a pointer. And if so, we need to check some alignment constraints. Uh, but on the whole, it's pretty straightforward. And raw next um, gives the definition of our raw next operator for C minor. And here we also check some alignment constraints. Then we define the definition of maps to using some predefined predicates on our model of um, states or heaps, which are called R maps or resource maps. All right, so that's all I'm going to say about the soundness proof. I now want to talk about some practical aspects of, uh, of developing uh, software in a proof. <laughs> so as John Bentley pointed out in his 1982 book, Writing Efficient Programs, optimizing um, software is not difficult, at least conceptually. Uh, you take a baseline optimization, uh, sorry, take a baseline evaluation of uh, the performance of your program. You optimize some aspect of the program, say the implementation of a particular data structure. <laughs> And then repeat this process until you're happy with the performance of the program. All right, so perhaps it's not too surprising that we could apply the same methodology to our verified theorem prover, and we did so. Um, and here our execution model was uh, to extract uh, the cock code to OCaml, and then uh, use OCaml op to produce an executable application that could be instrumented for profiling with GProf. And here's a sample GProf trace, uh, part of a GProf trace uh, from one run of the prover on a thousand entailments. So I want to talk briefly about some of the optimizations that we performed on the prover. Uh, so one of the first things we did was to implement a more efficient data structure for sets of clauses. Uh, we used red black trees, um, and our implementation is described in a paper by Appel, uh, Andrew Appel from September 2011. And I should note that an adapted version of this implementation is now in the COC 8.4 standard library. Um, we also um, implemented something called the priority heuristic. Uh, in the paramodulation system to choose small or good clauses for inferences first. Uh, we cached these priorities with the clauses. Uh, we extracted um, cock integers to OCaml native events. Uh, we placed some of the operations on lists of clauses with operations on red black trees. Uh, we did some basic redundancy elimination of pure clauses after spatial inference. And we also experimented with a new saturation method, uh, which I call model-based saturation an attempt to find models of satisfiable sets more quickly in the paramodulation system. Right, so we recorded this, uh, we uh, evaluated the speed up of each of these optimizations on a test set of 9,000 randomly generated talents. And for the most part, the speed up for most of these optimizations was between about uh, 1.04x and about 3.5x. Uh, but when applied sequentially, uh, we get speed up of 22.1x, uh, which we're very happy with, at least on this benchmark set. Uh, we also attempted to evaluate the overhead uh, for implementing each of these optimizations uh, just by going back through our SVN repository and figuring out how many lines of proof had to change versus lines of program. And here the ratios were about uh, 2x, uh, often under 2x. Um, the ratio for the clause sets implementation is a little bit higher um, because we had to prove many lemmas required for the standard library interface, but which weren't actually used in our implementation. Uh, sorry, in the sounds proof. And so we also benchmarked the code on three sets of benchmark entailments from the Barrow Perez and Wolchenko. Um, the first set is 11,000 randomly generated uh, separation logic entailments. 
Second set is 11,000 randomly generated heap inconsistency checks. And the third set is 209 um, entailments generated by Smallfoot during symbolic execution of programs. So Veristar here is the green line in the two top graphs. Um, so on the randomly generated um, general entailments, uh, we're not quite as quick as um, Smallfoot. Um, we're much faster than JSTAR on most entailments, and we're not nearly as fast as SLP. Uh, we believe our performance is reasonable on this test set. Um, on the heap inconsistency checks, uh, we actually outperform Smallfoot on the majority of entailments, and are almost as fast as SLP on most entailments. And on the, uh, the entailments generated by Smallfoot, uh, we actually solved all 209 entailments under 200 of a second. Uh, which is actually faster than SLP, which is Navarro Perez and Lukashenko's prover, um, and almost as fast as Smallfoot. Alright, so in conclusion, um, if you're going to write programs in a functional language, um, you might as well write them in a proof assistant like Cog, in which you can prove that your programs are correct. Um, and this wasn't, enti wasn't an entirely empty exercise for us. Uh, we actually found two related soundness bugs in Navarro Perez and Lukashenko's algorithm, uh, just through the process of proving implementation of that algorithm correct. And our experience with Veristar also um, shows that uh, implementing your code in a proof system like Coq doesn't mean you have to sacrifice modularity or, for the most part, um, efficiency. Um, although our prover is a little bit slower than um, some of the other provers on the randomly generated intelligence that I showed you, on the ones that you actually get during symbolic execution of programs, um, the performance of our tool is more than adequate. All right. Thank you.